I do like a drink from time to time. Everything in moderation though. And when it comes to fragrances, I love fragrances that have a boozy element to them. It's one of my favorite styles of fragrances actually. So in this video, I have seven great recommendations for you. How's it going guys? Raj here. Welcome back to the channel. So yeah, uh, fragrances that have an alcoholic um, uh, accord in them is something that I really enjoy. And I especially like fragrances that have like a rum note or a cognac or a whiskey note. Those are some of my favorites. But there are many other scents out there that also will give you a feeling of smelling like a gin and tonic. Um, uh, maybe like a mojito or champagne. Um, yeah, lots of different styles out there actually. Wine also, like white wine. And this might seem a bit strange to some people, like why would you want to smell like a bottle of whiskey? Well, I prefer fragrances that have a hint of that, that contribute to the overall composition. So I've got seven fragrances to mention. I have, in almost all cases, owned full bottles of these, so I have a good amount of experience so let's kick things off with the first fragrance. Coming from the house of By Killian, I think they're actually called Killian Paris. That's what I've been hearing recently. And this one is called Straight to Heaven. Straight to Heaven contains a wonderful rum note. It's very realistic. You can, you know, it, it gives you a, an image of rum in the barrel with the, uh, the wood that has absorbed up this wonderful rum note. It's very woody and soft but a touch spicy and quite addictive. And this was, I believe, one of the first Killian releases. It's definitely one of the first ones I tried from the brand. And the brand actually has quite a few fragrances that center around alcohol, whether it be single malt, uh, the fragrance called single malt, vodka on the rocks. They also have a few rum-based fragrances like this one. And I think they use uh, these, or they, they do this style quite well. This one is definitely, a good one to start out with, and I find it to be quite an easy to wear fragrance, actually. The next fragrance on the list comes from Louvain, and this one is called Idole de Louvain, specifically the Eau de Parfum. This one is the Eau de Parfum. I used to own the Eau de Toilette, and I have more experience with that one, to be honest, but I did have a sample of the EDP, which I really enjoyed. I'm gonna mention the EDP simply because it's the only one that's available. They've discontinued the EDT, but I think this version is, you know, still a really good, good version. Um, it contains, again, the, the notes of rum, which is one of my favorites. This fragrance is inspired by the spice roots or the trade roots. In fact, a lot of fragrances draw inspiration from when um, uh, spices and rum and lots of different things were transported along the oceans and along the seas. And this is a really, really beautiful fragrance. It has a spicy, almost gingerbread cookie vibe, uh, a very more intense woody vibe, I would say, compared to the EDT. I found the EDT a little bit more sweeter, um, but this one also still has that nice rum note in there and almost has a slightly leathery quality. I think it's a really beautiful fragrance. Olivia Jacobetti is the perfumer, and this is a fragrance and Luban actually as a house on the whole is not one that gets much attention, but this one is really interesting. I think the bottle design is really cool. Um, looks like some sort of African mask, you know, that you might find, you might like have hung up on your wall. A lot of people like to do that, collect those types of things. And it's definitely a fragrance worth checking out. The House of Guerlain have a line called the La et la Matière collection, which means the art and materials. This is their attempt at creating a high-end um, luxury line of fragrances and on the whole I think this is a really really good line. The fragrance I'm mentioning is Spiritus Dublavani. 
This fragrance centers around vanilla, but there is a rum quality in here. Again, drawing inspiration from the spice roots, um, rum being soaked up in a barrel. For me, it smells like a rum cake with a beautiful vanilla note. It is very boozy, nothing sick, not on the sickly sweet side. There is also a, a very woody quality, uh, cedarwood giving a dryness to the fragrance, creating a really, really nice contrast between this so, you know, the sweet vanilla and the sweet rum accords, um, you know, being balanced out with the very woody feel of this one. Uh, I think it's a great composition. Um, I think it very much is uh, one thing, it's, it's on the linear side. There is a bit of complexity to this fragrance, but it is slightly more on the linear side but overall just really well composed and would be a great place to start if you are trying to get into or want to get into the La Le Matier collection. Mona de Oreo has a fragrance called Vani. It's a fragrance I used to own and it is one that I would definitely welcome back into my collection. Vani, again, it centers around rum, so you might be picking up on a theme here. I love rum-based fragrances, what can I say? I love drinking rum too. And when it comes to fragrances, I love this warm glow, this ambery glow, this sweetness that it brings to a fragrance. There is a vanilla note in here that smells very much like a, a pod, you know, like it's been infused in a vat of rum. There's a spicy quality in this fragrance that I think is wonderful, and also this orange note. And these are actually a combination of notes that is quite common when it comes to boozy or rum-based fragrances. And Mona de Oreo has done a wonderful job. She is sadly no longer with us, but the brand still continues. And to be honest, it's a brand that doesn't, I think, get the recognition it deserves here on YouTube. Anyway, um, there are many new releases from the brand and I definitely want to get in back into this house. Um, there's definitely quality to be found. If you've tried this fragrance or any others from the house, please do let me know in the comments section down below. Next up on the list is a fragrance from Thierry Mugler. Actually, I think they're just called Mugler now, or Mugler, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. This one is Pure Malt. Oh man, Pure Malt is a beautiful fragrance. I like the uh, peaty, um, very much earthy, sweet earthy qualities with this. I love the whiskey notes in here. It's more of a, it's a whiskey based fragrance. There's a lot more of things going on as well. You've got the, the typical Amen DNA uh, there in a, a hint of it, that patchouli note, which can be quite potent, is taken down a notch, but it's still noticeable. There's an ambery side to this, and overall it's quite a delicious fragrance. Very, very popular here on YouTube with other reviewers. I can see why. Let me know your thoughts. Are you a fan of this one or did it not quite work out for you? Roger Parfum's Enigma is one of my favorite fragrances. This list, honestly, couldn't be complete without me mentioning Enigma. Um, they have it in the Parfum Cologne version now. I used to own it in the old Eau de Parfum, which I actually prefer, but the Parfum Cologne is still a really, really good fragrance. I have it here in the Travel Atomizer. I got this actually for free. When you make a purchase on the Roger Parfum website, they will throw in a free 7.5 ml um, atomizer, which is a pretty nice touch. This is great to travel with. And the fact that it's complimentary, I think is a really, really nice touch. This fragrance centers around cognac uh, at, the, at its core. It's very, very realistic. It has a potency to it. It has this sweetness that I think is really delicious, but also there is a tobacco quality in here and a vanilla note that is nice and uh, very authentic to me. It makes this fragrance overall quite masculine and it is perfect, I think, for evening wear, when you're going to a bar, when you're going for a nice dinner. It feels like a very elegant fragrance, but also one that has a ton of character and I think is in the within that the house is quite a unique fragrance. It's a wonderful fragrance. As I said, I do prefer the now discontinued Eau de Parfum and in hindsight, I shouldn't have sold my bottle. I, you might have heard me say this before, I like to, or in the past, I like to, liked 
to uh, rotate fragrances in and out of the collection, knowing that I would, you know, eventually bring them back. But with the way things happen in the fragrance world with discontinuations, sometimes your favorite fragrance will never come back. So I should have held, hold, um, held on to it. But this one does the job. The next fragrance on the list is from the brand Frappan. And this fragrance is called 1270. Wow, this one for me is a gourmand lover's dream. It's more of an adult gourmand. It doesn't have a juvenile side to it. Um, it has a wonderful feeling, like there is a cognac note in here. And it also has a, if you imagine like mulled wine, but you replace it with maybe a brandy or a cognac, but you keep the spices in there, you have that in 1270. I mentioned in my review that it also has a rum and raisin ice cream type quality. So it has a, you know, a boozy sweet feel to it. A fruitiness as well from, uh, like a, as I mentioned, raisins, but also there's a pineapple, like a cooked pineapple vibe. Wow, this fragrance is, <laughs> is really, really amazing. I know some people had problems when it came to performance with this one, but I got average performance. It's one of those where, because the scent is so good, I'm kind of happy to deal with average performance. 1270 is one of those that got mentioned so much back in the day here on YouTube. Nowadays, it's kind of forgotten, but definitely worth checking out if you haven't done so already. Which boozy fragrances do you like? Or is this not a genre that you enjoy at all? I'd love to hear from you guys. Please do leave a comment. If you like this type of content, please do consider subscribing. And uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. It really does help out the channel quite a lot. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on the next video. Take care, bye.